On a microbial level, syntrophy can mean any type of cross-feeding of molecules between microbial species. To better understand the concept of syntrophy in microbial systems, we are going to look at a specific example. Methanobacillus omeliansky. We will begin our journey in Russia, around the turn of the century. I discovered a single microorganism that can ferment ethanol to methane. You can imagine this was not easy, because we have to work in anaerobic conditions. I desired a medium specifically made to isolate this bacterium from any suitable environment, like soil samples. We are going to continue this research here, in St. Petersburg to be able to gain more knowledge on how this microorganism is actually capable of performing this reaction. I hope that future generations will profit from this research, because I foresee a world in which we better understand our microbial comrades in order to live in peace with them. So what reaction did the Omeliansi bacterium carry out? The substrates were ethanol and carbon dioxide. It was a methanogen bacterium. So methane, also called biogas, was produced together with acidic acids. After Vasily Omeliansky, the research was continued by Horace A. Barker. In 1940, he published a paper that stated that in the absence of CO2, the organism accumulates hydrogen until a point that the culture stops fermenting. After that, questions were asked about the purity of the culture. But only in 1967, Marvin P. Bryant and colleagues showed that M. Omeliansky was a mixed culture of two microorganisms. The two organisms were so dependable of each other that they had to be close by, as you can see. Then we come back to our definition of syntrophy. That means any type of cross-feeding of molecules between microbial species. So, this is a perfect example of syntrophy. With all this knowledge, the reaction of Vasily Omeliansky doesn't apply anymore. We look again at the reaction we had that came from 1910. In 1967, an intermediate was added between the two microorganisms. First, the microorganisms were qualified into two different domains. The first reaction was performed by bacteria and the second by archaea. The total reaction is adapted with the, in 1940 discovered, hydrogen as intermediate. To complete the total reaction, water was added. Currently, there is an endless amount of techniques used to study these microbial communities. The most important ones are Fluorescent staining, in which different types of cells get a different color. High performance liquid chromatography, which is used to detect and quantify certain molecules. Chemostats are used to grow microorganisms in a controlled environment. DNA sequencing, which can unravel the full genome of all microorganisms present in a mixture. Qualitative PCR, which detects and quantifies target DNA molecules. Flow cytometry, in which cells are counted and sorted according to type. Currently applications are being built on the knowledge that is gained from experimentation with microbial communities. A nice example of an application is the production of biogas from organic waste. Wastewater treatment plants are nowadays employing such processes in their design. So our journey ends here. The pioneering research of Omeliansky, Barker, Bryant and many others has brought us the opportunity to design a future in which we will be able to harness the power of centrophic communities.